Shalom, beloved. How privileged we are that the Lord has given us kind of the right, a right that we don't really deserve other than Him giving us this right because He is a good, good Father and a good King that we can come in like Jesus says in Matthew 6 and close the door behind us and then just be with Him just be in His presence His presence it is sweeter than honey it is more than anything anything, anything we could ever ever want Just one moment in the courts of the Lord, in the presence of the living God, the one who is holy and separate, unlike any other God, though there are no other gods, for there is only one true and living God, it is our King our Messiah, our Redeemer, our Healer. And as we sit in the room in His presence and we've closed the door behind us and we think and meditate on the Word, on the Word that became flesh, the Word who is dwelling amongst us, who is here, who is speaking to you and us, who always speaks, The voice of the Lord is never silent. There may be times that we feel or sense we are not hearing Him, but His voice is always there. He assures us and He says that His sheep, we are His sheep, you and us, me and my family and yours. He says, my sheep, They know my voice. They hear my voice. How I pray that as you are watching, that you may just also be aware, not just in feeling, but because we know who He is. We know because the Spirit of the Lord has revealed to us what the Lord has done for us how he gave his life on a cross, nailed on a cross with his arms wide open. And he stared at humanity and he said, Father, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. I pray that by faith, we will wait on him and seek him And maybe just before we go to bed at night and fall asleep, let Him be the last thought that we have when we end our day. And when we wake up in the morning, first thought in the morning, let it be Jesus. Again, I'm thinking of the prayer that St. Patrick prayed and he said, it is Jesus Christ before me. It is Jesus Christ behind me. It is Jesus on my left. It is Jesus on my right. It is Jesus Christ above and Jesus Christ beneath and Jesus Christ within. And I pray that we as a people that belongs to the Lord will continue to pray for our families and for the church for the children that suffer, for the world and what is happening in the world, the chaos. But in the midst of the chaos, that you and I will keep our eyes on the Lamb of God, on the King of Kings, and that we will not be overcome with fear But remember what the Lord has done and is doing. And tomorrow when we wake up, He holds to 
tomorrow in His hands. My tomorrow, Megan Teresa's tomorrow, you and your families tomorrow. Beloved brother and beloved sister, may the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, who reveals the Word, the heart of the Father, the heart of Christ, our King, may He reveal to us the truth of who holds your tomorrow and my tomorrow. Today is the day that the Lord has made to live this day as a child of God, as the bride of Christ, as the church. I pray for you too and pray for us whenever you pray for our family and for me that we will also strive towards a holy life. Walk away from the things that separate us from the Lord. Who wants to be separated from this good God, this good Father, Christ, our Redeemer, our Healer? I pray, beloved brother, beloved sister, church, and even if you are watching and you have never given your life to follow Christ, how sad if you will not do that for you will never know His glory and His presence and His beauty. I pray that if you happen to stumble upon this video, that you will hear the voice of the Spirit of the Lord as He speaks to all humanity and says, Turn, turn, turn from your wicked ways. So that you too may discover what Mary discovered when she discovered Christ and she would pour out all her perfume, her nod on him. What Peter discovered when he discovered Christ, when as a fisherman he was called to be a disciple, a disciple of the Most High. When Christ came into his life and the life of John and James. So much purpose. So much boldness. So much peace. So much life came to them. Our prayer as we pray for one another and we pray for this world. And we pray for the people that suffer in wars and the people that suffer in the winter when it's cold and people that suffer because of hunger because there's a lack of food. We pray that all will meet him. I want to close with this before we just continue to stay in the room behind the door. If you hear this and you hear, not hear with your ear, that you hear the sounds and the noise outside with, but if you too hear with the ear that the Lord has given us, buy oil, make time. I know we say this so often, but I sense there is such an urgency. We don't know the hour and the time that Christ will return. Neither do we know the time and the hour that we may end life on earth physically. But that's not the end of life. And in the presence of the Lord, when I close the door behind me, it's where the Lord and His Spirit has taught me so much, so much about His joy, about His mercy and grace, His goodness, His ways, that He's the potter. He's our good Father. He holds the universe in His hands, His hands, His holy hands, 
elders, they bow down, that they cast down their crowns before him. And they say, holy, 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 separate, separate, separate is the Lord our God. Beloved, I pray that you too will bow down and cast your crowns. And I will bow down and cast my crowns down before him and say, everything, everything is you. I thank Him. I thank Him for way back on the 31st of January, 1981, when I was introduced to Him, the King. And my life changed. And I could never even imagine wanting to go back to the life that I had for there was nothing and he came and my cup overflows I think of Teresa and our children and our grandchildren and all I can do every day is go down on my knees and say thank you thank you, thank you We've also worked through many, many storms. And I can imagine there's still a few ahead. But I know that every storm, every storm has been good to us. It has formed us. It's like Paul and Silas in prison, and they worship and they praise, and the doors open. And the next time Paul finds himself in prison again, he worships and he praises and the prison doors don't open. I feel such an urgency in, in this time of worship just to say, beloved, be careful who you listen to. Listen to him. He's the good shepherd. Never put any man on a pedestal. Whatever their title may be, it is the Lord. He is the King. It is Him we follow. It is in His Word we trust and all our trust we have in Him. He is able to look after you and your family and me and mine. And we know that. You know that. And every Christian knows that. But I sense, and maybe this is a prophetic word, for today let's draw closer there's an urgency to have oil in our lamps there's an urgency to step away from the shallow things in this world to know Christ I know when I speak, I speak for myself. I cannot speak for any of my family or any one of you who are watching. But I know my life is not only in good hands, it's in the best of best. Shalom. Peace. Draw closer. Worthy of all the praise 
as we could ever be Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you, and hold Yeah. 
Show me who 